scheduled meeting of the, in progress. of the Sunderland Select Board. Uh, the time is 631. Um, the first order of business will be approved the minutes of the July 10th, 2023 meeting. I will entertain a motion. So moved. All right, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All right, motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Crystal Drake, town by. Three nothing. Thank you very much. All right, our first order of new business is going to be to extend the Village Center Committee charge. Yes. Please go ahead and tell us about that. Um, and there's actually another addition. So the Village Center Committee was created in 2019 as an extension of the 120 North Main Street Committee, um, basically to coordinate some of the downtown projects, I believe, and make sure that there was consistency between the South Main Sidewalk Project, North Main, School Street, um, and the 120 North Main Project. Um, and it had a sunset date of when they finished their work or June 30th, 2023. Mm -hmm. um, they are still working and so have requested an extension. And they also um, pointed out that since the Community Pathways Committee has been disbanded and there is a seat uh, for a Community Pathways Committee member to change that to an at-large seat. So instead of two town-wide seats, there would be three and not one for the uh, Pathways Committee. Did they say how long they wanted to extend it for? They wanted to extend it to 2025 or when they're finished their work. Okay, so same wording, just yeah, two more yeah. years. Okay, um, so the change would be two more years on the on the length of time, and then also to change one of the seats that was in the Pathways Committee to a at large seat. Exactly. Okay. Yep. Um, I would entertain a motion on that. So moved. Okay, Crystal. Do we have a second? I second. All right, we have a motion made and seconded. Any discussion? All right, not hearing any discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Crystal Drake, John Clark. All right, three nothing. Thank you very much. All righty, um, that is it for uh, new business on here. Um, next up is uh, old business. We'll start with select board updates. I uh, just want to take a quick second to um, send Town of Sunderland's best wishes to all of the towns surrounding us that have been dealing with flooding. I know Deerfield has had a bunch of roads closed, Greenfield's had a bunch of issues, Colerain, um, Gill, and we've been very lucky here in town to have had minimal damage, but uh, you know, a lot of our friends and neighbors have not been as lucky, so um, you know, our, our thoughts are with you and we hope that things get recovered quickly. So um, That's it for me. Do you have anything you'd like to add? I'll just say uh, this week, I, last week I went to the Franklin County Council of Governments Council. It was good. I got a kind of a higher end view of what they do for work with the Dunleavy and the, and the council. I guess the big news is up there is that uh, the planning direct person in charge of planning, Peggy Sloan, she's retiring. Mm -hmm. um, it, it gave me a good, a better introduction to all the resources that they have available, you know, education, environment, health, economic development, emergency prep preparedness, shared services, all that. So it was good to, good to hear all that and meet the folks around the council, and uh, that was good. And then the only other second one I would mention is just a river walk cleanup after the flooding. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed this sign up, and I know that it's getting out there, but uh, Saturday, July 29th, this Saturday, 9 to 12, help with trimming, help with clearing the bases, raking with some muck. I don't know if you've walked it, but mm -hmm. there's a fair amount of muck that the siltation, as the river came up, the silt was left. So the kind of the, 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 the sandy stuff, is, is there's a lot of muck to clean. So bring your own tools, bring your own snacks and drinks. They're looking for wheelbarrows, shovels, rakes, saddle hose, clippers, weed whackers. Any questions, uh, there's an email address, Eileen. I won't spend, spell it up, but reach out to, to Jeff if you want to reach out to Eileen for any questions. Wonderful. Let's see if we can try to. Yeah, yeah. Maybe a little... I think it's up on the website. Right, it's up on my website. Here it is also. Um, if you have any questions, please reach out to Jeff about that. Um, thank you very much. That's a very important thing. It is, uh, you know, one of the new beautiful features of our town. It's important that we do the work to, to maintain it, especially after a disaster like this. And thank you for the, the update from the FERCOG. Sure. Um, it's important that we maintain a good line of communication with them. Uh, Crystal, do you have anything that you'd like to uh, bring up? Yep, so we had um, South County EMS meeting. I'm not sure since our last select board meeting, but um, Tim Drumgoal has accepted the position of interim director for South County EMS. 
Um, so that's very good. Working on all the approvals through legal and everyone else to get the job for the permanent director slash chief up in Boston. Um, they did get a, I wouldn't say a true actual price, but you know, they are starting to look at um, the cost of a new ambulance. So they have got some estimates, I guess, would be the best way. And from the estimate that they've received, they've kind of decided maybe they need to reach out to some others and see, you know, pricing wise, you know, what's really out there. But that was about it. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that. Um, I shudder to think at how much more expensive the <laughs> ambulance is going to get in the next five months or whatever. Um, but here we are. Uh, is that everything you wanted to, to bring up, Crystal? Yeah, I'm all set. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, we appreciate you joining us virtually. Um, Jeff. Yeah, a uh, couple things um, briefly related to the heavy rains. Just uh, to your point, Nathaniel, our highway superintendent did a bunch of millings from the paving on 47 that we're doing, reached out to Deerfield and said, hey, if you need, you know, we have all these millings. So we're trying to, even though we weren't affected, we're trying to help them out just like I'm sure they would if we were, you know, severely affected. Um, so just wanted to point that out. Fortunately, you know, public infrastructure was was okay in Sunderland. I think the major impacts were on the farmland. So um, there's a number of disaster recovery assistance programs from the federal government, um, specific for um, farmers, crops, livestock, things like that. And for those that don't know, the Farm Service Agency, uh, the local office is in Greenfield. Uh, their phone number is 413-223-9277, or you can call me and I can try and put you in touch with uh, the right people. But um, just want to get that information out there to try to help our farmers recover from this. Um, so that was the first. And then the second is there was, um, I have an ARPA request, uh, or three ARPA requests actually. Um, the First is to pay the fiscal year 24 invoice for the um, Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control District. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be 3,000. I think we pay, used ARPA funds last year and then two years ago, I think it was a warrant article. Um, basically a, a way to inform the town that this is something we're doing and make sure that they approved a town meeting. Yep. Um, that's $3,000. The second is we got the fiscal year 24 contract for landfill monitoring. When you close a landfill, you have to make sure that um, that it, it's not leaking stuff out into the ground and um, or having significant. I, Dan, you probably can explain this a lot better, but you need to monitor every year. Um, basically, we've had a contract with the same organization since 2007. I think they've raised the last year was the first year they raised the rates they raised it 50 bucks so this year they came back and it was a little more expensive um it went from 5050 to 8000 so i called them and i said hey we did not budget for 8000 that's pretty big can we do it over two years and they said yes so i'm going to ask for 1500 um, in addition to the 5000 for the landfill monitoring and then the last thing is we have two very old desktop computers. Um, the only two remaining that have not been replaced with laptops, they were the accountant's computer and uh, the payroll clerk. Payroll clerk's computer uh, can't get past the blue screen of death. Mm -hmm. um, so I set her up with my old desktop, which is still outdated and Windows 7 and not supported. Um, so we're looking at different options for purchasing computers. We got the um, specs that our IT provider suggested. Um, we will look at the most cost effective computer that will last at least, that can at least support Windows 11 and get us through, you know, 2025 to 2027. Mm -hmm. um, a new computer with the specs they suggested, a new Dell would be about $750. 
Uh, I think you can get a refurbished with the same specs for closer to 200. I saw whether or not they actually ship, I don't know. Because <laughs> I'm also hearing that there are still supply chain issues. Yeah. Um, so it, those, so those are the three ARPA requests. Um, to summarize, 3,000 for Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control District, 1,500 for increased cost of landfill monitoring, and um, to up to 2,000 to replace uh, two computers, um, desktop computers. Okay. Um, do you want three separate votes on that, or one vote for uh, up to? Well, I guess I would. I have a couple. Qu I have a question uh, about the de um, replacing the desktops. Yes. Is it better off to like bite the bullet and replace them with? laptops so in the event that something happens again where you have to vacate that building for a period of time they have a very portable computer they can use it a work from home situation that's a good question <laughs> let me think about that um so, yeah, maybe. Um, that might be something that's worth asking North Northwest or Northeast Systems, or whatever our IT provider is. Um, there is a trade-off there also, which is that desktops are infinitely more repairable and upgradable and part swappable. Laptops are a real hard thing to fix, especially if something goes wrong with the screen or the solid state drive or that kind of stuff. And you're also paying a premium for yeah. the same yeah. the same stats as you would a desktop computer. Um, but that probably is a question best left to our IT. Yeah, and and Crystal, I think I think my biggest hesitation is that um, the the people that use it are or that are going to use it aren't going to be spending a whole lot of time and so does it make sense the increased cost um, when you know I guess I, is it does it make more sense to, to buy something less expensive now thinking hey when is there going to be another pandemic and worst case scenario if there is you know, we only have to buy two laptops because we have all the rest. Um, and if there isn't, we saved a couple hundred bucks. So I, I yeah, I, I don't know, but I'll look into it and I could at least bring back a, a price comparison of what laptops, uh, laptop and um, we'd probably want to port so that they could. I'd like to know the price comparison between the two, what the IT professional says and also what the, the employees who are going to be using them's opinion on the matter is. Okay. They may be like, oh no, I, I, you know, I had a laptop at one point, much happier with a desktop, or they might be like, oh, that'd be great because there's some times where I could really use to be able to bring it home with me and finish something up or, or you know, take it to a, a baseball game and finish up some work while I'm at the baseball game. Um, if you can get those three pieces of information, I think that would be good for us to have. Um, so let's push that one item off until next time to give us a chance to get that information. Uh, I'm comfortable on the other two items. Well, Crystal, do you have anything on so that? Well, I guess I, I just then have a follow-up with it, that since one of the computers is on a blue screen of death <laughs> and currently using a outdated computer, you know, that is barely scraping them by, should we at least replace that one computer now and the second one, wait to see whether a laptop or a desktop is a better option. One you need kind of right away, correct? Yeah, yeah so what I, what I didn't mention um, <laughs> is that, yeah, Northeast IT did not like uh, our, our temporary plan <laughs> of using an old computer, and they basically said, we, you can do that, but we're not going to support it. It's yeah. a Windows 7 machine. So, yes, the sooner the sooner we get that machine up and running, um, that that's so Can we approve $2,000 for it today, mm -hmm. have you do that research, email all of us next day or two, 
and we can give approval via email to go ahead with that or yeah, can we approve the one can we approve the one immediately yeah yeah, we, yeah you can do that but it, that would be i mean you could call a meeting for tomorrow <laughs> well, or, or how this can we approve it for two desk for two desktop computers yes how do you do the research and if we decide to roll back that decision that i think we could do we could tell you to don't spend that money until next week if if we make a decision no it's <laughs> Yeah, you have to you because you can't tell me the whole select board has to tell me and you yeah. all can't tell me. We can't. You can't because that would be open me long. Um, okay. Yeah, you're right. You right. can. So could we do the proposal for replacing one yeah. desktop yeah. with another desktop, and then the second computer because that one's still functioning, correct? Yes. So that one then. We make the decision whether laptop, desktop is the best option to go. And then we're down to, in the event something happens, possibly only having to come up with one laptop. And that's sort of splitting the difference. Or, in, yeah. Uh, sorry, one other, op uh, two other options. One, you could vote and just say, Jeff, whatever you think the best thing is, do that. Or you could appoint one of yourselves and say, Jeff, work with. Nathaniel or Dan or Crystal, and the two of you make the best decision on this. Um, I mean, well, well, I guess one last question before we, if we do, if we do buy desktop computers, are there other desktops in the building that might fail at some point that that we could? Let's say we do end up having to replace those with with laptops in in, in the future. Would these desktops then be obsolete entirely at that point, or are there other people in the building or other departments in town that would be happy to have a almost new desktop? Because that's the case. If, if if the school's like, oh yeah, we'd love to have a newer desktop in the office or in the nurses' room or one of the classrooms or something like that, then that takes a little bit of the not risk, but a little bit of the hesitation away from spending the money on desktops. If at the if the worst case isn't just wasting that money, it's shifting that somewhere else in the in the town. Yeah, um, I think most I can check, but I think most of our technology was upgraded during the pandemic, mm -hmm. um, and what hadn't been was I believe mostly in the police. But I'll check with police and fire because some of their stuff is old and could probably be upgraded too. Um, so maybe, maybe we go ahead with the one and then you ask me to do a more comprehensive survey and come back to you in two weeks and say this is the status, the status of our older computers and how many we have and what it would cost to, does that make, is that sort of what you're thinking or? Yeah. I also don't want to make this yeah, a that. huge hassle on your end over hundred and fifty dollar difference between the two computers or something like that but you know do, do enough to make you, you feel comfortable that we're making the right decision um, and then we can do that so that so that, so that would leave us with three thousand fifteen hundred and then a thousand for one of the two computers or up to a thousand for one of the two computers yeah. and can we do that all in one yeah okay crystal are you are you comfortable with that I just said one, yes I am I just said I one, am. one thought on the monitoring and uh, Sometimes I do. I've done a lot of these, and uh, what I do when he's Hampton is I do them with three-year, three-year things, and I can send a draft to you. They could, you could use maybe if you wanted to bid it, and just send it out to a few, and maybe and that way you get three years of pricing, and you won't have any surprise at least during the term. Okay. But just yeah. a thought. Yeah. That, we, could, we don't have to. It's not really related to this, but it's just a thought. Yeah. No, I think that it's worth seeing what's out there, right? Yep. Uh, with the numbers. No. Okay. All right, I will entertain a motion to approve $3,000 for the Mosquito District, $1,500 for the monitoring, and $1,000 for the upgrade of a dying computer. So moved. All right, do we have a second? Um, I would, I'll second it, but I would also like to maybe amend that a little bit. Just saying for that $3,000 for the Mosquito District, can we in the future, next year's budget, put that as part of the budget yeah. so that we're not trying to come up with the money later on for that mos mosquito district. 
Yeah, and I, yep. know, I know people have thoughts about that, so it's a good one to put up. Yep. Yep, we can make it a line item in the in the operating budget. And likewise, whatever we end up deciding with the monitoring, if we can adjust okay. our budget for that yeah. going forward, so that we don't have to ARPA it or whatever our other option is that that year. Um, all right. So, uh, so amended. Do we have a with a vote in the amendment, or or is that really a procedural amendment more than a? Yeah, I don't. I I think that that's. I'm okay with that. Okay. All right. Um. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. First, Greg Chapai. All right, three nothing. Hi. Thank you. Wonderful. Is that everything you have for us? That is all I have. All right. Um, unless there's no other new business, I will entertain a motion to adjourn for the evening. So moved. All right, we have a motion made. Oh. Crystal? Back up. All right, we have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye, Aye. Crystal, Greg, John, bye. All righty, take us out at 6.53 p.m.